All right, so when we talked about variables before, uh, we mentioned they were kind of like shoe boxes, right? These boxes where we can put values into, we can take the values out of them, uh, they can change, that's why they're called variable. So if we want to store a number, we put that maybe in an integer type variable. If we want to store a name, we call that a string of characters, so we need a string type variable and so forth. We need the appropriate type little variable box that we can store these values in. But they're very simple, they're primitive variables, they only store a single value. So when we're talking about object-oriented programming, one facet of it is these complex variables or these objects that we want to work with to build our program. And these objects are really variables that can store multiple types of variables inside them and even functionality inside them. So they're, they're more complicated in organism than a simple primitive variable. When we want to make these objects, we need some kind of description, some kind of definition or declaration of what these objects are going to look like when we punch out these objects. So for example, let's look at a couple different analogies here. Making cookies, right? Because we knead up some dough, we roll it out. Say I want to make 20 or 30 star-shaped cookies. Well, I could go and try to cut each one out individually, but that's going to be super painful. So what do we do? We grab a template or a cookie cutter, we punch that into the dough, we peel out the dough, and voila, we have all of our cookies, all of which look identical at first if we did a good job. And then, when I have all these different cookies, I can start to manipulate them or work with them individually. For instance, this one cookie I could give frosting to, another cookie I could give sprinkles to. So, in this analogy, our, our template or our cookie cutter is what we're calling a class in programming languages, or sometimes a structure. It's what we fill out to determine what the objects will look like. And then the cookies themselves are the actual objects, also called instances. So you need kind of this description, and you need the actual objects or instances from the description. And there are many other analogies out there. DNA, for example. DNA is kind of a description of an organism. We use that, and we can punch out a bunch of identical-looking organisms, for the most part, I mean. Maybe fingerprints or freckles or something might be slightly different due to mutations, but for the most part, they'll look almost identical. And then once we have them, we can manipulate them and work with them differently. Architectural blueprints for some kind of building or house. If the class had all of that information, uh, we can use that to punch out a bunch of different houses or buildings that look identical. And then we can work with them to change their color, etc. So, you know, once we have all these objects, the objects are what we work with. Instead of simple primitive variables, we have the objects, and the objects themselves contain uh, primitive variables or other objects inside of them, and functionality as well. And that is a big part of object-oriented programming, and it's, it's what we need to do to create the objects and then use them to build complex programs.